Louisiana's breast cancer death rates are among the highest in the nation. Unfortunately, many women don't know much about their breast unless they breastfeed their children or have had a problem. Learning about breast structure and anatomy can help you understand which changes are normal and which are not. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, please join TGMC as we discuss breast cancer symptoms, prevention tactics, and the importance of regular screenings and support. Joining us this evening is Dr. Robert Gamble, a medical oncologist at the Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at Terrebonne General Medical Center. Robert Gamble and uh, Doctor, good to have you back. Uh, you. Good to have you on the show. And Thank you. before we get started, certainly want to commend you for the outstanding work that you do at the Mary Bird uh, Cancer Center at TGMC. And uh, we appreciate it. And I know a lot of your patients in the community appreciate it as Thank well. You. Okay, uh, Breast Cancer uh, Awareness Month. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess, let's just start with the basic. I mean, what is breast cancer? Breast cancer is a malignant tumor that arises within the breast tissue. Uh, basically, there's two anatomic areas of the breast, the glands that produce milk and the ducts that carry the milk from the glands to the nipple. The uh, breast cancer uh, that arises can arise from the glands, and that's called lobular carcinoma. Uh, ductal carcinoma arises in the ducts that carries the milk from the glands to the nipple. Uh, ductal carcinoma is much easier to find. It's by far the most common type. Lobular carcinoma is a little bit more difficult to find, and it accounts for probably 10 to 15 percent of all types of breast cancer. Who is uh, generally, I guess, affected uh, by breast cancer? Well, risk factors are mostly gender, sex, and age. Obviously, more common in women. Right? Men do get breast cancer. But by far, uh, women uh, get breast cancer uh, more commonly than men. And, and also, it's an age issue. Okay. And in fact, I think we have a graphic uh, that we can show on the screen, which kind of goes ahead and indicates some of the risk factors or the increased risk factors, as you were just alluding to. Right. Family history is another one. Uh, it's the second most uh, important risk factor, uh, especially if there are first-degree relatives, brothers, sisters, mothers. Uh, fathers who have breast cancer, also those that would be younger than age 40, all right? That brings into history um, also a genetic influence. The most common is what are referred to as the BRCA, BRCA. These are genes that in the normal person prevent breast cancer from happening. Sometimes when they get mutated and are passed on to children, the risk of breast cancer rises exponentially. Um, you can have a f up to 80 percent uh, chance of getting breast cancer in these uh, patients who have the abnormal genes that are inherited from their family. Okay, and uh, as well as lifestyle factors, are there some, I guess, that uh, increase your risk as well? Yes, alcohol is believed to be one. Um, uh, smoking, not so much. Some people think there's some type of connection, but uh, being overweight also um, uh, there's a smaller risk of when you're having children, using birth control pills, uh, some hormonal therapies, as they mentioned. Okay. And what about uh, lifestyle factors that might decrease your risk? Well, anything that makes you healthier. Eating better, uh, cutting down on fats, oils, greasy foods, heart-healthy diet, physically active, maintaining an appropriate weight. Um, these are things that uh, anyone should try to attain if, they're, if possible. All right, and uh, I guess a lot of people may be very curious, uh, are there common symptoms or, or maybe what, what are the potential symptoms that uh, might uh, give somebody some cause for alert? Any cancer that's early is very difficult to find, mainly because it's so small. Um, when cancer in the breast becomes larger, the most common is a a uh, mass that the woman may feel. All right? This usually is painless, firm, has very irregular borders. You can also have um, issues related to redness of the breast, dimpling of the breast. Sometimes the nipple may be inverted, uh, closing in, and sometimes you may have fluid, sometimes bloody fluid that may come from the nipple itself. Okay. 
And um, what tests are there that are maybe recommended or available to try to help determine uh, a diagnosis at, at an early stage? Right. Um, if there is a suspicion based on uh, feel palpation, you would follow up with a mammogram and, if needed, an ultrasound. Uh, one may also consider getting an MRI of the breast. All right. There's also a BSGI uh, test that uh, is, a, um, is a nuclear medicine test that sometimes can help uh, distinguish benign from malignant tumors. But in the end, you're left with getting a biopsy. Okay, why don't we do this? Uh, let's take us a break. Uh, this is a good time to do it. And what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll continue our discussion right after these messages. That's why thousands of women go to the experts. Women's Imaging and Breast Center at TGMC. It all begins here. Matthew takes pictures of insects, birds, his family. We love him so much. So when I was told I had breast cancer, I thought, what's my son gonna do without me? My name is Valerie Manns, and I am so thankful I chose Mary Bird Perkins at TGMC for my cancer treatment. I had surgery and chemo, and everyone there was with me every step. I never felt like just a name on a folder. They treat you like family at Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. No matter their health care needs, from OB to emergency room visits, rehabilitation, and everything in between. More people choose TGMC for life. Terrebonne General Medical Center. It all begins here. Early detection is the best protection. That's why thousands of women go to the... Okay, welcome back. Again, we're, uh, we have as our guest Dr. Robert Gamble, who is an oncologist at Mary Berg Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. And doctor, we were talking about breast cancer, uh, in, I guess in recognition of uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we, we talked about diagnosis and you know tests that uh, might be available. Let's try to get into another subject related, of course, is People are always concerned, you know, if they come down with cancer, about mm -hmm. survival. Mm -hmm. What type of survival rates, uh, you know, of those diagnosed uh, are there with, with breast cancer? Generally, it's uh, all cancers are staged uh, one, two, three, and four, majority of uh, solid tumors, and that's based on various things, mainly the size of the tumor, the presence or absence of lymph nodes, the presence or absence of metastatic disease. So early stage breast cancer, stages one and two, generally has a three quarter to oh, slightly over 90% survival rate. Uh, more advanced disease, stage three, roughly two thirds, up to two thirds can be alive five years down the road. Stage four disease, um, there are certain scenarios where patients can live years mm -hmm. with stage four, which means metastatic disease. Um, that's been uh, something that's under intense scrutiny for research to find out how those women are doing this, but all of us in this line of work have seen this happen on more than one occasion and very frequently. But, and of course, I guess the, the universal thinking is, and it's well known, the earlier caught, uh, the better. Of course, no question about it. Right. Okay, and um, what type of treatment does the Maryburg Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC offer? Right. The, uh, other than the um, facilities for evaluating and making a diagnosis, chemotherapy is available, systemic chemotherapy. We also have clinical trials that uh, try to answer certain questions about uh, what types of cancer are best, 
a question. What types of cancer therapy are best? Right. How to uh, address certain issues? Uh, cancer therapy is always evolving, whether it's breast, colon, or lung. And the purpose of experimental trials is to improve what we already have and make it better. Um, chemotherapy, you can also use hormonal manipulation, which are usually pills, and radiation therapy, all of which are readily available at our center. All right. Uh, now, people may have heard about it, but there's a Go Pink, uh, the Cajun Go, G-E-A-U-X, uh, Go Pink program. Can you give us an indication of what that is? Well, basically, Go Pink is a series of fundraising events uh, involving businesses, schools, uh, individuals. Any uh, profits that are obtained are put back into our system, uh, attention to programs that we offer for early detection, free screening programs, and breast cancer awareness uh, programs. So it's a way of making sure the community is up to date, aware of what we have, making our facilities available to anyone and everyone in the area. All right, and uh, with regards to, um, I guess, Mary Ber Perkins Cancer Center, what kind of support uh, at TGMC uh, is offered to their uh, breast cancer patients? Well, all cancer patients can attend um, our Camp Bluebird, which is a three-day uh, free-for-all of uh, all cancer survivors, and they do a lot of crazy stuff there. Um, but it's been going on for the past 20-something years, and it's basically just a lot of fun that all our cancer survivors uh, partake with. There's music, there's arts and crafts, and believe me, it's very interesting. There's dancing. Um, it's, I'm sorry, it's a big showdown. Uh, there's the Look Good, Feel Better system. There's the Beautiful You Wig Room, Bosom Buddies. There's a Nosotros, which is uh, provided by Dr. Doria. Uh, mm -hmm. This is at least once or twice a month. That is a very big following. And then there's Flowers to Fight Cancer. All right. Uh, now, with regards to Maryburg Perkins uh, Cancer Center at Terrebonne General Medical Center, um, do they offer uh, breast cancer, I guess, screening? Correct. Uh, screenings are offered for various cancers, prostate, which is uh, coming up, uh, as well as breast cancer. There's a um, bus that uh, the hospital has and utilizes to extend the uh, free screening capabilities to the general community. Um, and all this is for uh, breast cancer um, uh, awareness and just to make these resources available to the community. All right, and if anybody wants some more information concerning uh, breast cancer, the screenings, or even the uh, Go Pink program, um, how can they get additional information? Um, there's a website, which you can see, uh, www.marybird.org-tgmc. There's the phone number, which is there, 985-851-8661. That number would give you information about what programs are available, going ongoing, and in the future. All right. Um, we do have just a couple of minutes left, or a, half, a minute and a half, I should say. Let, let me just ask you in general, of course, the, the Maryburg Perkins Cancer Center has been uh, relatively new at, uh, at Terrebonne General Medical Center, but actually uh, y'all have some uh, cutting edge technology as well as uh, first class uh, cancer treatment. I want to commend you and, and the hospital and the Maryburg Perkins Center. Can you just give us your overall comments, if you don't mind, about the, uh, the, can the cancer center, uh, Maryburg Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC? Well, we try to, when we see a person with cancer, it's a very unique scenario. Everyone has a different story. We, we try to make people feel at home. We try to give them as much support as possible. Um, some uh, patients um, uh, are, are, are very, very grateful. Most patients, in fact, all patients are grateful for what we're able to do. And each one is an individual, all right? We never try to forget that. Each one is an individual. Everyone has their own certain concerns, and we try to address those as much as we can. We offer what facilities we have available, and um, we also address their spiritual aspect, too. Okay, very good, Doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the outstanding work that you and your colleagues do, and uh, we appreciate you taking time out to share this on the program. Thank you very much. All right, Thank you. Uh, what we'll do, we'll take a break now, and we have Stan Gravois coming up next in sports. I got a feeling he's going to mention the Saints, so we'll wait and see.